Hello, spiritual prayer warriors. Oh, God bless you, dear saints. I tell you what, the Holy Spirit wanted me to share some exciting things with you to encourage your heart to big deal your place in the body of Christ and all that God is doing through you. He wanted me to share these things and to connect you with his plans for you in the coming days. The very first thing he told me is he said, we are entering a very creative era, a very creative era. Talking about the creativity of God, I mean, obviously, God is the creator. Everything he does has a creative and redemptive element about it. And so he is the Father who creates. And so if the Father is creative, everything around him, his Son, Jesus Christ, creates, but also his sons, the body of Christ, have that creative ability within them. You do. You have the ability to create, create so many different things. Think about it. He spoke to me and he said, we were created by him to be creative. We follow after him. We're in his kingdom. It's a creative kingdom. It's not a perverting kingdom, a counterfeiting kingdom, a wicked, twisted kingdom, such as the devil has. He said this. He said, we are new creators in Christ Jesus. Man, that caught my attention. And of course, it was a play on we are new creations in Christ Jesus. Jesus. But that means we are new creators. We are creating heaven on earth. We are creating the will of God into our lives. We are creating destiny that he has placed within our hearts. We are creating heaven. All of those things coming and displaying and releasing them into this earth. We're creating them for God. We are not angels which were or are created order. Yes, they're powerful. They do God's bidding. They help us. Man, I've been involved in so many spiritual warfare situations where I've watched the angels of God uh, protect, fight battles for me, do tremendous things, but they're fulfilling the assignment that was given unto them. They're not creating the assignment. God is the creator. We are human beings. We are a created race. And a race has the ability to reproduce, to create. We have the ability to hear from the Holy Spirit, have him formulate on the inside of us by the word and the spirit, the things of God, and then for us to be able to create them. In other words, bring them to pass. We do it by our authority, with our faith, with our prayers, by the words of our mouth, by decrees, by walking it all out, we create those things. And so there's so much to the prophetic application of the way that uh, there's the, the creative part, I would say the prophetic part of the church, where the Holy Spirit just fills us with all these things of what we can do, and then he inspires and empowers us to walk it out and make it happen. The heavenly father creates things. The spirit realm creates things. Therefore, those are of his family class create things. Not taking away anything from the Godhead, the father, the son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That's where all the power, that's where all the authority, was. everything comes. But remember the flow is from heaven to earth. Jesus said, all authority, both in heaven and on earth, has been given unto me. Countless scriptures in the New Testament talks about the flow from heaven to earth. So the assignment comes from heaven. Wisdom comes from heaven. New creation comes from heaven. Empowerment comes from heaven. But it all comes to us on the earth, and we release it as the body of Christ. And so we, as his children, have the ability to create. We create in so many different ways. 
I mean, you know, salvation. If you lead somebody to the Lord, it's not you that's saving them, but you create, you help the Holy Spirit, you help God create a situation for them to be able to receive. You've helped create another born-again saint in God. The Holy Spirit, the same way. You help create that situation when you pray for somebody to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit and you lead them into how to speak in tongues. Uh, and then as you begin to, to disciple or train and teach them, you know, you, you lay hands on the sick, which also is a creative situation. Healing is creative. You lay hands on somebody, you pray for them, the power of God, boom, you're creating healing. So much of creating is binding and loosing, okay? And I found that uh, through my life, that, that whichever side you come from, it works. If you bind an ungodly situation, like let's say if you bind sickness and command it to leave somebody's body, and then healing is loosed and comes in. Or if you just pray and loose healing into their body, and then the sickness is bound and driven out. Whichever door you come in, front or back door, it's all the same. It creates healing. It creates heaven on earth in that individual. What about finances? It's the same way. Prayer, walking in authority, following the economic laws of God, the anointing for supernatural finances. You have the ability to create that by believing God by walking in it, saying, yes, Lord, I believe you want me to prosper. I believe you want me to have more because you want me to have more for covenant fulfillment in my own life, to bless my family. That's how good and how loving God is. God loves us to have good things. He wants us to. It's the enemy that doesn't want that. So we create what God wants. We pray it. And then we allow the Holy Spirit to form that and to flow through us. Deliverance from all kinds of demonic oppression and activity and demonization and influence and all that. We create that deliverance by obeying God. Um, there, sometimes we create, in fact, a lot of times, we create environments for anointing to happen. You walk in the room and the atmosphere shifts and it creates a different environment in that room. As you pray, you shift things around you and around other people. You create an environment for the creative flow of God to happen. Heaven wants to create itself on earth. God, who is the Father, has placed that creative ability within us to create. We are entering a new Christian era. And one of the things that the Lord has shared with me is that there is going to be an increase in the creative aspect. In fact, he said, we are now entering a very creative era. A very creative era. Very creative era. That signals to me that God is saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. Forgive my English, but you ain't seen nothing yet. It's going to get bigger, grander, more powerful, greater displays. You are going to watch the miraculous power of God on earth. And one of the reasons that the Lord wanted me to share this with you is so that you can see it's not a mindset of just saying, oh, okay, God, go get them. Yeah, we all feel that way at times. Uh, God, go get them. God, do it. But he's saying, no, I'm going to create all of this through you. Through you. You obey me. It's not that we just do anything and everything we want. We listen to the Spirit. We read the Word of God. We get revelation. And in that revelation, we then take dominion. You know, the Lord took me to heaven one time. And he took me into a special room where he wanted to talk to me about revelation. 
And there in the center of this big place in heaven, there was a large building. The building was a large circular building. And there was a front door. And so the Lord took me into the front door. And he said, as we entered into the first room, like an entryway, he said, this is the salvation room. He said, you don't get into this room without receiving revelation. But once you receive revelation, then you have to do more than that. You have to take ownership and you have to occupy it. And he said, that's the way it is. That revelation coming from heaven is more than just an idea. Uh, it's more than just an inspiration. It actually creates a location for you to live in, for you to occupy. He used these words, and for you to take dominion. Take dominion and own that room. That's salvation. And then he opened the door on the other side of the room, and in this big circular building, there was a circular hallway that went across, and then one around it, and then one that went across. But there were just many rooms all around in this building. There were revelation rooms, understanding rooms, enlightenment rooms. And as I looked down the hall, the next one was a baptism in the Holy Spirit room. And then there was a healing room. And it was all these different aspects of the kingdom of God. And the Lord said, it's the same with every room. It's not enough to just know the room exists. It's not good enough to go look in the room. He said, you actually spiritually have to occupy the place of the revelation. Make it yours. Own it. Have dominion. And he said, that's what true revelation in the spirit looks like and is supposed to be about. So when we have this revelation, the spirit of God begins to deal with us about our life. And he gives us wisdom about our family and our children, our parents, our neighbors, job, vocation, things that we're supposed to be involved in. All of those things then are opportunities to create what God has for us in those situations. And so we are entering a new era that is highly creative. And God is going to move powerfully through us, but we are going to create those situations. Praise God. Now, the second thing that he spoke to me about, he said, spiritual gifting works in our everyday life, not just in church. Our everyday life. Before I ever went in the ministry, I did it in my job. I walked in the spirit. When I was working in a sawmill at nights and going to college during the day. CK and I were newly married. Before we had received the call into the ministry. Man, CK, she was out there. She was praying for her friends. She was moving in the gifts of the spirit. She was hearing from God. She had witnessed anybody, anywhere, anytime. She had more boldness than I did when it came to public ministry in that capacity. Um, but I'd do it at work. People would come to me at lunchtime and say, Mike, I know that you're a Christian because I can tell there's something different about you. And I've heard that, but um, you know, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes they would say, there are a couple of other Christians in our departments, but I don't want them because all they do is just preach. You love people. You're a nice guy. Tell me the truth. And I'd sit down and pray with them. And I'd get words of knowledge sometimes about if it were having a merit, marital difficulty, um, they needed a little bit of counsel and advice. If it was a physical problem, I'd pray with them. And maybe it's in the lunchroom. And I wouldn't lay hands on their head and, Thus saith the Lord, but I'd just be seated beside them and reach over, put my hand on their shoulder and just say, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I just pray for Joe. And I pray for the healing power of God to come into him right now and for that sickness to leave. And I lead them to the Lord. Those are the kind of things that just are natural 
aspects of our lives, the gifts of the Spirit. We were created to operate in the supernatural all the time. We are spiritual beings. A spiritual being lives on the inside of this physical body. It's in contact with the spiritual realm and is hearing the voice of God and operating in spiritual power and all these things, right, coexisting with the natural realm. So I wanted to encourage you to learn the voice of God and learn how to operate. And particularly, you know, the prophetic and all these miracle things operate you, your family, your friends, your vocation, your job. That's why this the prophetic reaches throughout the earth because you take it into the grocery store you may work in or the bank. You may be a doctor, you take it to the hospital or your office. You may be an attorney or an automobile insurance salesman. It doesn't matter where you work, it's in the marketplace. You are taking it. That's where your gifting shines. That's where it's developed. That's how the Holy Spirit uses you in these new, very creative times. Praise God. The Word of God and the Holy Spirit revelation create vision and passion and instruction. And then we, by our authority and faith, recreate it by releasing it into our lives. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is on you. I want to pray for you right now for a release for a transfer, an activation, a release. Because the gifting is in you, and Jesus needs you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now, I pray for every single person listening to the sound of my voice. And I just pray that, number one, a release of that creative, understanding, ability, responsibility in their lives. Number two, for the Holy Spirit's empowerment and the gifts of the Spirit, all these things to be released, activated, flowing through their lives. Strengthen them, heal them, prosper them. Show them their destiny in advance, the vision for the future, so they can create it on this earth. And show the body of Christ the vision of soul winning and revival so we can create it in this earth. Praise God. Visit our website if you would. The description or the link is in the description below the video. And when you go, if you would like to become a partner of the ministry, you can do so on the secure donation page. But also there are some other links there. One of them is for my new podcast, Third Heaven Authority. I really encourage you to click on that link, listen to the podcast, subscribe to them. It's on charismapodcastnetwork.com. Every major podcast catcher that's out there probably has it, uh, and it'll bless your life. Go create.